everyone in today's video we're going to be talking about a few pointers with regard to surgical anatomy in relation to pelvic organ prolapse first when pelvic organ prolapse was first being described delancy came up with a three tier system where he classified the supports of uterus into tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 in tier 1 he mainly considered the ligaments which are supporting the uterine apex so the two ligaments which he considered was the uterosacrus which attached from posterior part of the uterocervical junction posteriorly to the sacrum and the cardinal ligaments which went from the uterus to the lateral pelvic wall these two constituted the first tier of delancey's classification the second tier was mainly a fibromuscular structure or more importantly more tendinous or less ligamentous than the cardinals so in this he considered the fibromuscular part of the vagina going on and then it is fusing with the arcus tendinus fascia this arcus tendinus fascia is nothing but the condensation of the fascia which is covering the obturator muscle and the levator ani muscle so all of this was a flimsy attachment which he considered in the second tier the third tier was the lower most it mainly considered all the perineal muscles and the levator ani muscles that is the pelvic floor and the perineal body why this classification went on for a long time is it was structurally it explained all the symptoms and it kind of explained the symptomatology and the repair for pelvic organ prolapse for example if tier 1 if there was a defect then it was basically an apical prolapse or the utero vaginal descent if second tier was involved then basically it was a cystocel or a rectocele depending on which part is defective and if the third tier of delancey's was gone then it basically presented with a presidentia or it presented with perineal body gaping now after few years after development of this delancey's classification they realized that all these structures are not independent of each other that is the first tier second tier third tier they're not independent of each other they're all fused together forming one specific structure or all of them are supporting the same structures together they work together hence after that they came up with another concept where they divided all these parts into compartments why this uh, was divided into compartment is it was easier to explain the symptomatology but this focused more on the site specific repair so if we could identify which part or which membrane or which support is defective the treatment for the uv prolapse would be depending on what part is affected so to explain that they divided all of this into three compartments so which were the three compartments the three compartments were the apical compartment the anterior compartment and the posterior compartment each of this compartment was described with respect to its contents its supports and what happens when these supports were defective the first part which mainly involved the apical compartment was this so but before starting the compartment in division we should always remember that the upper part of the vagina is in close relation with the lower part of the cervix okay so all the attachments which are very close to the upper part of the vagina are nothing but the attachments which are close by to the cervix that is the upper part of the vagina is mainly in relation to the uterosacrus posteriorly the pubic cervical ligament anteriorly and the cardinal ligaments laterally so if these are the attachments for the serv the distal part of the cervix it means few fibers of these are also fused with the upper part of the vagina so keeping this in mind let's describe the apical compartment the apical compartment mainly has the lower part of the uh, the main it mainly consists of the cervix and the upper part of the vagina so its supports will be the uterosacral ligament the cardinal ligament okay so if apical compartment is defective it mainly leads to uv descent and it can lead to vault prolapse this happens mainly after hysterectomy and posteriorly there is attachment of the uterosacral ligaments here so if that is defective it can also lead to enteroceal 
because part of pod is also supported in this there you uh, posteriorly the fascia of the non villus it comes along the posterior surface of the uterus then forms a u and then goes attached posteriorly so this pod is formed here in relation to the apical compartment and hence any defect in this will lead to formation of enterocele left with is the posterior compartment the posterior compartment support is called as the posterior fibromuscular septum the upper one third is again in relation with the uterosacral the cardinal ligaments so any uh, defect in this will lead to uv prolapse vault prolapse and enterocele this whole middle part of the posterior compartment is in relation with the rectum so any defect in this part of the posterior compartment leads to rectocele and the lowermost part is in relation with the perineal body perineal membrane and all the perineal muscles so any defect in this part will lead to a, a defective perineal body or an incompetent perineal body or a gaping enteritis so hope this video was useful